Namaste yogis. In this class, we're going to focus on habits, habitual movements, what we tend to do and why and maybe if we want to break out of those habitual movements. Because habits, of course, are formed through repetition. Repetition is how we build a skill. And it's a tool that we can use if we want to master a certain skill, of course. But they can also keep us stuck where we don't want to be. So habits in the way that we move on our yoga mat, but of course behavioral habits out in the, in the world beyond our yoga mat. It's always good, I think, to be able to recognize what you do out of habit without even thinking about it because it's just become so ingrained through repetition and take that knowledge as inspiration to change it up a bit if you want to. So what we're going to do is just do a Surya Namaskar A, run through it a few times and then do the same with Surya B and just give ourselves an opportunity to listen to and pay attention to where we are kind of stuck in the same way of moving and how we can break out of that. Okay, so we'll get started. Standing at the top of the mat in our Tadasana. So just to begin, go ahead and find your grounding feeling pressing down through all, cor all four corners of the feet. Finding a slight engagement through the thighs, through the glutes, the abdominals, and lifting the top of the head up. Bring the chin back a little bit. Shoulders down, even with the ears. Take a deep inhale. Breathing right down into the belly and exhale. Lifting up the pelvic floor, the abdominal muscles to help press the exhale. Good, inhale, reach the arms up, look up, and exhale, fold down. We're just gonna go through our Surya A, just in the way that we always do. Inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, plant the hands, step the feet back or jump back, Chaturanga. Inhale into a cobra or an upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. So just pay attention as you go through this, what it is that you normally do. Just be aware of what is habitual and what you're doing through mindful awareness. Even here in your downward facing dog as you make little adjustments, what is it that you normally do? What is it that happens in your body without you even having to think about it? Good, bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Step, jump, walk the feet to the top of the mat, inhale, lengthen, and exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms up, look up, tall, reach up, long, and exhale, samastitihi. Good. Before we move to the next one, bring your hands down, step the feet back, come onto the hands and knees, and I want you to do a few cat-cow movements with me. So inhale as you lift the tailbone up, squeeze the shoulder blades together behind you, reach the head up into your cow, exhale, Undo everything and exaggerate as much as you can in the other direction into your cat. So reach the tailbone down, crown of the head down, core comes up towards the spine. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. So as you're aware, I'm sure, what's happening in your cat-cow is your pelvis is tilting as far forward and then as far back as you can, and your shoulders are going from scapular protraction to scapular retraction. So the shoulder blades squeezing together behind you in your cow and pushing away from each other in, their cat, in the cat. Your head is moving up and back as well. So if you want to, you can even just break these down. So you make these cat cow movements in just the hips, just the shoulders, just the head to really understand what's happening there. You put it all together and you get your cat cows. Cool. What we're going to do then is take those movements into every part of our Surya A. So come back to your Samastitihi, to your Tadasana. 
arms down by your side, nice and tall. And already right here in your Tadasana, you can do some cat cow movements. So the arms will move, but make it more about the shoulders. And let this just be an exploration for you. So if you discover something here, maybe your arms do get involved. You know, let it be a little dance. And you don't have to move in any particular tempo. You can move super, super, super slowly if you want to, or speed it up. We'll take that movement and play around with going up to our Ordva and then back down to Tadasana, kind of going through like a, a cow posture, but then you can do a cat posture too. So this is just the way to explore and break out of your habits. Maybe in your Urdhva Hastasana, you do a few more cat-cow kind of movements. Okay, you could stay here all day. Honestly, sometimes I do. My practice is just like wiggling, just standing on the mat. But we'll move on and fold down to Uttanasana. Again here, you can do just some cat-cow dances. It is more of a dance than to than traditional yoga asana, that's for sure. Cool. What if we take that into our plank? So we jump back or step back or walk back. I think that the kind of this kind of movement in plank in particular can really help under help you understand that nice strong plank that we're looking for with the scapulas protracted and the tailbone tucked under so that the core is engaged because what happens a lot of times is people end up in a very cat shape, sorry, no, cow shape posture in their plank. And you really want cat without closing the hips. So keep the hips open. Cool. If you've got the strength for it, maybe even some cat cow in chaturanga. Whoa, that's hard. All right, let's bring it up. Upward facing. What happens if you do some cat cow? in your upward facing dog. So this is another opportunity to explore, especially what's happening in the shoulders in your upward facing dog, because what happens a lot of times is we get more of a, a cat shape in our shoulders, um, but what we really want is more of that scapula protraction, shoulders pulling back behind you. Good. And then downward facing dog. Again, just think about rounding through the shoulders and the upper back and tucking the tailbone under and then kind of arching everything. So it might feel really strange. It might feel weird. It might even feel like something that you never want to do again. But that's all part of the exploration. And... This is just what I do in my practice, and honestly, I don't, I don't really do a whole lot of just sticking to it like this, because what I find is before long, I'm moving around in some other way because I've discovered something about how I'm feeling, somewhere that feels tight, somewhere that feels weak. And then that inspires the rest of my practice. I think, oh, I'm really, really tight there. What other poses can I do to help? Mm open that up or whatever so we'll move on bend the knees inhale look forward bring it up to the top of the mat inhale lengthen exhale fold and you can cat cow your way all the way up all the way up to your ordva hastasana because why not like why not if it feels okay for you, as long as you're not doing something that feels painful, then I believe that we should play around with our bodies. That's what we're here for. That's why we're living in these amazing bodies, is to experience the movement that we're capable of. OK, 
Okay, for our third Surya A, how we're gonna explore that is we're gonna stop halfway, halfway between each posture. So, Tadasana to Urdhvahastasana. Whatever it is that you normally do, you probably just think about getting to the next posture. So, I want you to just stop somewhere in the middle, okay? and stop there and explore that sensation, explore that feeling, and play around with making little micro adjustments, micro movements, to see if you can just feel what it is to be in this posture, in this shape, a little bit more. So I'm here, but you might be somewhere else. Play around with not just what's happening in your upper body, but maybe even shift your weight from one foot to the other or from your from the front of your feet like into your toes to the back of your feet put a little bend in the knees whatever just find a new posture here something that maybe you've never actually done before and then we'll carry on up to Urdhvastasana we're going to do the same thing on the way down to Uttanasana so however it is that you normally fold down Find somewhere in between that you can stay at and then play around there. Maybe articulate the hips like in that cat-cow that we did. See what happens if you try and isolate one movement while you're in this posture that maybe wasn't a posture before because you always just moved right through it but now you're holding it and exploring in that. Cool, let's fold down Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana, but what happens in between? Maybe there's some shape in between, something that you can turn into your own individual little asana that you've never seen anybody else do. Who cares? It's yours, it's your practice. Cool, we'll come back. Ardha Uttanasana. Plant the hands, bring it back. Plank. Chaturanga. Throughout all of these, you can find some new posture. Perhaps we stop somewhere between upward facing dog and downward facing dog. I think that if we pay attention to what happens in between the postures, if we pay attention to the transitions and treat the transitions as a series of postures all put together, then you've got an endless amount of inspiration because in between every movement is really an infinite number of other movements. And you can explore every inch of the way between two postures. You're gonna flow backwards and forwards between, say, upward facing dog and downward facing dog and discover what happens. This is where we get a lot of the spinal wave kind of things happening. But what happens if you stop? Oh, somewhere. <laughs> and then just keep going. Okay, guys, sorry, I get, I get lost in this stuff. I enjoy it so much. I almost forgot that I was Recording, okay. Bend the knees and inhale, look forward. Bring the feet to the top of the mat. Come up for your Ardha Uttanasana. And exhale, fold. Come up halfway. Feel free to just stop the video and keep on exploring in this way if you want to. But we're going to move on to Surya B. I've got a few more things up my sleeve I'm going to share with you. So again, just like we did our Surya A, the first one, will flow through in kind of the way that we normally do. But remember, pay attention to what your habits are. So bend your knees, reach the arms up, Utkatasana. Make sure you're shifting your weight back over, over your heels, driving down through the heels, inhale. Exhale, fold down Uttanasana. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, plant the hands, bring the feet back, Chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Reach the right leg up, inhale. Exhale, 
step it between the hands. Inhale, reach the arms up high. Exhale, plant the hands back down, chaturanga, as you exhale. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. If I'm going too fast, just pause the video so you can really explore. Inhale, reach the left leg up. Exhale, step it between the hands. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, plant the hands. Step back, plank, lower down, chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Bend the knees, inhale, look forward. Come up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Bend to the knees as you reach the arms up towards the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, Samastiti. Good, by moving fast, you'll probably fall into your habits. So we're gonna change it up now and see how much of that we can do on our tiptoes. That's just another way that I like to change it up, okay? Um, but if you've got something else in mind, maybe just turn the feet out wide or turn the feet in or just have the feet just on the edges of the mat. That's another way that you can explore something very slightly different, but um, we'll still open up a whole world of possibilities for you. So we'll come into our Tadasana, but come up all the way onto the tiptoes as high as you can. Inhale, bend the knees, reach the arms up, Utkatasana on the tiptoes. Exhale, fold down, Uttanasana on the tiptoes. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bring it back, plank, Chaturanga, upward facing dog. Maybe we'll stay on the tiptoes here even. And exhale, downward facing dog. And perhaps instead of trying to press the heels down onto the mat, we'll stay on our toes, maybe even bring the tops of the toes to the mat, give the tops of the feet a little bit of a stretch. That's just an option. If it works for you, I know this is, um, it feels great for me, but for a lot of people, this is torture. So don't worry about it if it's not working for you. Stay on the tiptoes of the left foot, reach the right leg up, take an inhale. As you exhale, step the right toes between the hands. Can you come up to your crescent lunge on the tiptoes of the right foot? Take an inhale and exhale, lower the hands down. Step back to your plank, lower down chaturanga. Upward facing dog, option to stay on the tiptoes. Exhale, downward facing dog, option to come up onto the tops of the toes. Flip the right toes back around. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Exhale, step the left toes between the hands. Inhale, come up, crescent lunge on the tiptoes of that left foot. Inhale, exhale, lower the hands. Step it back, plank, chaturanga. Upward facing dog, inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. I'm gonna be here on the tops of my toes because I quite like it. But play around with whatever, whatever new sensation you might be feeling by doing it in this way. Where can you get a new stretch or just a new sensation? Or have you discovered something new about your practice or about yourself? And it might even be that there's not so much great stuff happening in the body, but your mind is reacting in some way or another, and you can always listen to that and let that be a little bit of a teacher for you. Good, well, bend to the knees, inhale, look forward and jump. Okay. Come up onto the tiptoes as you come up to your Ardha Uttanasana, inhale, exhale, Uttanasana on the toes. Inhale, bend the knees. Try and keep the heels as high as you can as you bring yourself into this tiptoes Uttanasana. Sorry, Utkatasana. Exhale. Stay on the toes in your Tadasana at the end of this tiptoes Surya B. Cool, and then we'll bring the feet back down. All right. Last Surya B. We're going to do the same thing that we did in that last Surya A where we stop halfway. So I'm going to flow through the beginning bit, 
quickly. If you want to play around, though, you know what to do. We'll go through to our downward facing dog in whatever way, maybe just breaking some habit, doing something differently. Hopefully you've got lots of ideas by now, so I don't even need to give you that much direction. And you can add different variations as you see fit. We'll flow through that chaturanga and upward facing dog into our downward facing dog of our last Surya B. Now reach the right leg up. As you do so though, remember this is a transition that we can play around with. So can you just stop somewhere in between your downward facing dog and your three-legged dog and play around? Maybe just rotate the right femur in the hip joint Rotate it in, rotate it out. I don't know about you, but that makes my glutes start to really burn. One more inhale. Good. As you exhale, begin to bring the right foot forward between your hands, but again, stop somewhere halfway. Play around with what's happening here. Can you just like do a little dance here? <laughs> Move the leg around. Mm-hmm. We kind of look like crazy people maybe, but that's okay, we're crazy people together. We'll step the right foot between the hands now. And again, don't just come up all the way, like straight away to your warrior one or crescent lunge. You're missing a whole opportunity to explore there. So what happens if you come up really, really slowly and find some posture halfway through, and then just breathe into it and explore what's happening there. Pay attention to where your hips are. Is your left hip dropping maybe? Can you lift it up? Does this burn in your glutes? Does it burn in your lower back? Because you flow through this transition so quickly that you don't normally get the benefits of it. Cool, we'll lift all the way up. Take an inhale. As you exhale, maybe find some other new way to come down and step back. Take your vinyasa. I could make this super long. In fact, this is very much what one of my workshops is about, and it's a three-hour workshop. I'm trying to keep this into a short and sweet YouTube video. Um, but um, yeah, as the left leg lifts up again. Play around with something in between. Don't just Swing your leg straight up to your three-legged down dog, but go somewhere in between and play. And remember, it doesn't even need to necessarily be about the leg. It could be about doing something different with the hands. Maybe just play around with your balance or something. Lift one hand up at a time. Slowly bring the left knee forward. Before you step it through the hands, play around with something here. Where can you bring that knee as opposed to just straight forward towards your chin? You know what I mean? Do something different. Then step it between your hands. Then before you come up to your crescent lunge, come somewhere in between and play around with that. Pay attention to the hips again. Maybe there's cat-cow movements you could do here. It makes it quite hard. It makes it a lot more challenging whenever we break these habits. Take an inhale, and then as you exhale, everything back down. Sip it back, plank, chaturanga. We form habits, and things become easy. And that's fine. That's why we do repetition to build a skill. But equally, we need to break our habits as well. We need to learn new things and form new habitual movements until it's... We need to break out of our patterns 
change things up, let those new things slowly become habits and then break those habits again, over and over again. I think it's the best way to practice, it's the best way to live life. Cool. I'm gonna challenge you one more time. Whatever it is that you do to normally bring your feet to the top of the mat from your down dog to your uttanasana, do something different. I don't care what it is. It can be crazy. Maybe walk your feet around like you're playing a weird game of Twister, okay? Whatever it is, do something different. Inhale then, come up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fall down into a weird variation of Uttanasana, something you've never done before. And then come up from there to your Urvahastasana. And exhale, Samastitihi. I hope that that was really fun for you. Um, feel free to keep moving. I hope that this has inspired you to keep moving and keep exploring. Um, if you like this kind of thing, this is, this is the way that I teach in my workshops. And um, so maybe I'll see you there at one of my workshops. Namaste.